Hi, my name is Steve. I um, want to discuss stuff about the Lionsgate portal and the things that I was involved with in you know, like the higher dimensions and um, my my involvement of helping build um, this new energy system for everyone, which will help unlock the DNA, help get trauma out, um, help you connect to your heart and to the connections that you have out in the universe. And energy will come in, help balance you out, and um, make you feel better. Connect with the, with the land, and stars. Like it's it's charging up the whole air for people to connect back to their roots of who they are. Um, I've had quite the involvement with with everything. I've been dismantling. CIA energy. I was dismantling. dismantling. Uh, they tried putting implants into me, but the um, the Zetas and the Greys were helping me um, getting those out when they tried. Um, it, was a, it was a good defensive mechanism. I made some progress in the Nevada desert, breaking black grids and stuff and going deep in their bases. Uh, I went into Switzerland. I remember doing that. We broke that up. Uh, the Dulce bases, where they usually house people for their experiments and stuff, uh, we went in there and invaded some of that stuff. Uh, what, how I usually do it is um, I'll go in the astro and talk to others to become aware. And um, I like connect my higher self with theirs, and then I'll go on like missions. I get my body heats up. Uh, um, yeah, I feel a lot of heat coming on me. Or I raise my vibration, and then I'll see myself going into like star trajectories, connecting into where we need to go. And it feels like I run through concrete walls sometimes at the end. And I'll have to like really like kind of like lay down for like a half hour to like recuperate from it because like it just feels like you just banged your, your body up a little bit after running through all this energy. Um, I get assistance from Neptune to keep me in reality from phasing out too much. That that's happened a few times. I've actually stated that the friends, oh, I just phased in, and uh, I feel good. Um, the Archons seem to be impressed of what I can break, and some German Archon beings are still upset about everything that I have done. I've been like putting new codes in, into the life grids to allow this new energy that we're, that we've been pumping into this sphere since like August nineteenth. Or see here, I got it right here. Um, August nineteenth, two thousand eighteen. Yeah, great activation. That's. That's when we like completed the circuit for the celestial spheres for everything, and that's another involvement with them. And that's that's what the Lion Gate is all about. Um, I'm also connected. Um, I left the whole matrix above like Area Fifty One in the data. I just my higher self saw like huge holes in the programming, and I I took I took it, and I just had it went for the went for the ride. You know, a few times psychosis and stuff like that, but um, the, the creators needed me to do stuff for them, and I was one of few that can still do it. So I did it because I want to. I want to see everyone grow, get connected to their heart, because that feels really good for us. It really makes us keep creating for everyone because we love that feeling when people use their hearts. It's the best feeling. It's just like it raises our frequency so much. Um, I rebuilt Odin's Rainbow Bridge. That was a big accomplishment for me. The city lit up like a Christmas tree. Like the whole town it was like a power source, and that was like we just started cleaning out each sphere. Cleaning out the tubes of like the where the energy lines 
run through for the universe. <sighs> I'm still con I'm connected to all the generals. That's why that's that's the missions that have been going on in the Lions Gate. Um, these the generals are still connected to me. A lot of dark stuff. I was, I'm I do a lot of dark missions and stuff and break things because that's where all this black energy was and we needed to um clean it out. I regain back the power sources and the lost energy of the creators and return that energy back to them. So we can get um, input on how to run this more efficiently and connect those that have these energies in them because through the bloodlines of everyone, like these, these energies are present, so everyone's going to have them. So they need to be balanced in accordance to what they need and how it needs to be done. Um, Connected to Mary Magdalene, Earth and Sirius, past lives. Palladians have been working in the background. Isis was visiting me a lot through my awakening. She she taught me a lot of tantric energy and how to like sense it, how to move it up. Um Connected with Tesla, we we use a lot of his technology to uh, like for the rings and stuff like that, and he was a big help. I don't know everything, but he comes up quite often in certain times for me when I hit these higher frequency. Uh, Ganesh helped keep my chakras in order when I uh, went up into the uh, the mainframe of the Archon grid or whatever and um everything was ripping apart because I had to go through a black hole and um I went through everything fell out all my tools and I started shouting out binary code which is like the backdoor system of of this place and I don't I don't know maybe Maybe it could have been in a sphere that was blocked away and we were just breaking into it and reestablishing the order into it so we can get up to the Brahmin brain, which is like a, it's like a blue sun or something with the rings. And we, through Herios Gamos, we were able to ignite the, like the power source of it all. And that sent the codes up too. It was very quite interesting experience, and I'll talk about that as well in the timeline because that's when it occurred. Um, and Joan of Arc connected with her. I helped her with her situations of being like a female leader and and like divine power, where her energy can help raise the um, the probably the fighting spirit of a man because like the heart to like get like electrical pulsations and it would feel really good and it would help like in the battle. So that's that's like my involvement before all this stuff occurred on uh, the Lionsgate. I did a, I did a channeling session, and what's what's um how I know this is all real is because um a few days later I was meditating and he came up, he said greetings. He always says greetings and blessings, and he said that there were some people that I needed to uh, reconnect back with because it's important. So just like um like a portal kind of opened up a little bit, and um I went in to it and then it, it then it like magnetized to like the location where I needed to go and I found myself in in the base and I was like on a catwalk there was like a big there was like a big window inside and it was there was like it was like a purple space around and like rocks everywhere like cliffs and stuff like that and um just walking down and like kind of observing I didn't I didn't like really look all around it was just more like 
maybe 30 feet from where I needed to take a left into the room. So I just got like a glimpse and there was this uh, officer that was kind of leading me with him too. So I was on the catwalk and then I take a left into the room. It's like a debriefing room. My old buddy that I've been doing stuff with was there as well. So I knew something was up with everything. And and so how I experienced it is I'll, I'll vibrate on a higher level in the frequency and then I'll feel sensations all over my body. Third eye palsy, a crown will, will, will be like bringing out energy out and like I'll feel in my heart and stuff like that. And then I'll get a vision of the energy that I'm experiencing and it makes like a big picture in my head what's going on. And um, they were just, um, they, were, they told me something about the Sapphire Project, which I learned was something that's associated with the Tetragrammaton of the, the Hebrew faith. And that plays out in in these events as well. Um, so after that debriefing, I went into some rejuvenation chamber that like kind of activated my latent DNA to go on everything on these missions and stuff. And I was doing a lot of energy integration and reactivation. And um, I was up to like five in the morning, five or six in the morning, just like vibrating and like feeling like, like I was like metamorphosing and like bringing in energy and stuff like that. And like, it, it doesn't hurt or anything. Like it kind of feels good. I don't know, it's like, it's like this nice vibration that like comes over you and then like you, you can like see what you like look like when the energy moves on. And then it, a lot, some of it is, is like reptilian because I'm a dragon. So I can, it's easy for me to like, it's like a cousin of the dragons and stuff like that. Um, but, um, see so yeah, a lot of stuff. Um, after I was in the rehabilitation chamber and so like six in the morning, I asked other people and someone said that they heard something about the Sapphire Project and that will come into play. It was like a bunch of phases and stuff like that, but the, the big ones we got through and, um, we, we got it done. We did it all. So I'm going to start discussing the timeline here. So. Here. So, just to give a little background here, I was stuck in some grid. It was kind of in the form of a Metatron cube. It was all black, and um, it was spindly too. And it, as it moved through space, it would like animate through in like a spindle of black energy or black black goo. So this happened on eight ten nineteen. The grid breakout, then another Lions Gate three years ago. Um, I broke out of this grid. It was like a moon. I was like deep inside, like a moon inside, like some arconic hell. And uh, when I when it first occurred to me, so I had a Reiki attunement that same day, and the lady that started the procedure on me. As soon as she went over my head, I saw this like rainbow, like um, translucent dragon serpent, and it happened to be Kali. It was Kali that who that was, but like she was really fierce. She like threw her fangs out and like above me. Like I saw, it and it made me like really nervous because I didn't know what I was. I thought it was just going to be like a gentle thing, but it was like a chance for them to get to me. So they took it and I was training for a long time. Uh, since 2014, I've been like training for, I mean, I wasn't like looking to do that. Like it kind of just came to me, but like I knew something was coming and I wanted to make sure that I was in shape for everything. So if anything explosive did occur, I could handle it and move through it quickly. And that's what I experienced on the 10th. Like that, everything that I did for those five years of the meditating, like two hours a day, three hours a day, uh, strict diet, getting, I got my body really clean and I just ate really well, didn't eat a lot of shit, um, stayed away from drinking a lot, you know, maybe once or twice here and there. 
um, a lot of running. I did tons of running because I was just like, I want to get my meridian strong. And um, a lot of stretching. I did tons of stretching. And then just lots of meditation. I would sit and I would go through like wormholes or I, get, I would connect to divine energies and they would interact with my hands, my fingers, and play with play with the fingertips of my hands and electrify different energy centers and it would give me a lot of like loving blissful like like very divine energy toward my whole energy system so i knew i was i was doing something right and getting more answers and stuff like that and all that led to the 8 10 19 and it prepared me for everything and isis was always visiting me in certain ways and I, mean, I, I would get kisses on my third eye and like and like really beautiful spirits that would come and like massage my whole body and like comfort me because I know that my journey has been long, tough and hard and that uh, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be worth it all because it, like these those feelings when you get from the higher dimensions you just wanna protect it and cherish it and show it to others. You know, it's not all about destruction and stuff. And I mean, I know I I was very, I was very ruthless once I came out. I I would collapse a lot of universes, and I'm sure I caused a lot of death from people using Archon energy. But it was all it it all had to happen. I mean, we kept warning them, and they just kept fighting. You know, and they they made their decisions, and so we just we just have to make the tough decisions and keep moving. And energy isn't always destroyed. Like it's not like you don't. The energy just doesn't get destroyed. It gets transmuted into something like more cohesive. You know, and instead of it being like a slave pit, it's like you can make your decisions the way you want to, but you'll feel it more in like your chakra systems if it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. And you can like base your decisions off the heart more than just a thought, you know, like it's a mind heart connection. And that's what we try to make stronger with this new, new, new type of, um, energy that we're, we're bringing in here from this, from this grid that we installed. So I, uh, I ended up going to Yahweh's sphere. So there's this big tetragram, uh, Tetragridian grid that exists, and on the top, I believe, is Yahweh's sphere. This is um, is connected to the dragons and connected to Enlil as well. And I, I can explain that later. Um, so I didn't go inside or anything, but he spoke to me. He told me that I was proud. No, that he was proud and and really happy how hard I've worked to get to that point. And that there's a lot of work to do. And that's all he really said. But he gave me a lot of like golden loving energy and that that made me feel really good. Like I like I felt like I was I was really doing something right and I just had to continue to do it. And this was all after yeah, so this was three days after I came out. Day two or something like that. No, it was day three. Yeah, because uh, this the first day was I, I got out. Second day I went to like a water planet and hung out and rested. And then the third day I went, I went, I like saw all the universes like zipping by. And then I just saw this big giant sun or sphere, like with nothing else around it. It was just him. I didn't see any grid lines or nothing connecting. It was all. It was there was nothing there. So like we were like rebuilding it after that. She wonder. I, don't know, I just had I just had a thought about how everything was just so messed up when I came out, and I'm glad I came out when I did because who knows what would have happened. Uh, when I first came out, uh, people were falling off Merkabas. Like these, I think it's like the dream space. And like, they, they get housed in like these Merkabas. And these Merkabas were just like breaking apart and people were falling into oblivion. 
and maybe that that might explain why people have dreams where they're falling. So I was like catching them as they fell, and I was like freaking out. I'm like, what is wrong with this place? That that happened during that week too after the great breakout. Um, so that was back in 19, 20, 2019. So it kind of just explains why I'm I'm doing the things that I'm doing or what I'm connecting with. So June 8th, I get connected back to my higher self with uh, one of my Kundalini guides. Uh, my, my brain got really energized and I wanted to start working out because back in May, I got a message from my officer in the higher dimensions. He was yelling at me for not being in shape. And um, that was like, I kind of like knew maybe something was, was going to happen. And I kept telling myself, like, for a few months that, like, I'm going to have to, like, switch eventually because, like, things are really going to move forward. So I kind of took a little vacation after, like, 2019 and 2020. Um, June 8th. So, yeah. So that was in May and then June 8th I connected to. And that's when I really started going back to the gym and lifting and getting, getting a lot stronger. June 14th, I get another reading from her. Uh, connects me back to my medieval roots with my involvement with Jonah Arc and being killed by people like that kind of like opened up the compressed past memory and she helped connect me back to my Hindu my my Hindu roots because I, I have connections to them and I'll explain that more um June and then I just kept going back with her to sessions June 21st July 25th August 9th and um, in August 23rd, I went through my birth trauma with her and my father rescue. And that's part of the timeline, too. And um, during all this, too, July 5th, I had a, that's when I had my Ivan Teller session. And then 7-9, I had my mission connection. So I was just gearing up for all this stuff, getting reconnected, like being reactivated. And, um, so that kind of brings me to my August timeline of my Lionsgate, which I call Into, Into the Shadows. So, 7.13, I meet, like, one of my earthly twin flames, and, like, Five, fifth or sixth dimension twin twin flame two with Nephthys. Um, meeting and my higher self, I woke her higher self up too. And I'm gonna read. I'll read it too because all all these all these timeline events are are all written in my journal. Book one, one, two, three. All right, so this is uh, when I met my twin flame. I was on Facebook scrolling down and noticed a cry for help, asking for her to help her connect to her higher self. I decided to give her a reply, and she agreed for me to try. I was energizing her field with golden light and trying to connect to her heart. I felt her push away, so I tried to stay at a distance. After about a minute, I finally got a connection to her heart. It was enough to get an image of her higher self, which was passed out. The place was in ruins, and I saw exploded planets and debris everywhere. I stand next to her and tried to wake her up. To my effort, I could not do it. So I finished my session and felt like her kid got some from her as well. About four to five hours later, I try again, and as I connected my body, it got very energetic. This made me laugh as well, and a bright blast of light emanated from my chest. I also felt the presence of Arcturians, which helped to energize my vest to her. As the burst reached her, she jumped up immediately and said, 
what the fuck happened? In my head, I was like, I was hoping you know. Without a clue, she begins to brush herself off and, sh and shoot little asteroids in the space we were floating. It looked like a systems check. She then began to fly around, and I really enjoyed her for how tough she seemed. She had the personality of Gamora. It was like... She then... We met in the middle and looked into her eyes. It was like time stopped for a few seconds. She then flew away, but I knew I would see her again. So that was... That was my meeting, my twin flame. So that was August 1st. Not August 1st. 7.13, that's when it occurred. So, what happened was, like, I did a tuning fork session on her, too, like, the night the night after that, and the energy got really, really, um, I really felt it in my body, and I got really hungry afterwards, too, and it, it kind of took a little bit out of me, because it was, there's a lot of field being, like, moved in and around, recalibrated and stuff, and then, so I did that too. So I kind of recalibrated for that, and then I was I just kept working with her for a little bit, and then that's when eight three I experienced Herios Gamos, one of the, one of the first phases, and I'll explain what Herios Gamos is. So, Herios meaning holy, and Gamos meaning marriage. In Tatric traditions, it is associated with male compassion and skillful means with female insight. Represents primordial or mystic union of wisdom and compassion. Ensure abundance, prosperity, cosmic fertility, and to validate the status of a king. Refers to the risen Christ Christo Sophia, full resurrection of the body to the eternal light of the Christos. A Christic male and a Christic female unite in a sacred marriage, a rod and staff union as a Christo Sophia to correct the Sophianic body and restore liberation of ascension upon the earth. Christo Sophia is a perfection of the law of gender as the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine made whole. Inner discovery of the spark of divinity of the crystal heart reveals that the nature of sacred marriage and the presence, per, per, presence of the female Sophia consciousness unified with the state of Christum. And to my to my belief, this is this is my uh, observation: is it's a balance of light and dark on both genders, creating love as a vibration of creation. So that was eight. That's a three, and I got a story here to tell of, of it. It's um, it's also when I really delved deep into my Celtic, cult, my Celtic roots. It was like a Celtic reconnection. So I was laying in bed, talking to Gina, focusing on her energy. I told her to put her hands up like mine, and I would focus on the tips of her fingers. I felt a strong connection form, and my crown to the root began to vibrate. I directed the energy from my body to my hands, and the trinity knot formed from my palms of my hands. The energy began to explode from my hands into hers, as her palms also carried the same knot. I began to see the, a forest, one light and one dark. There was a strange entity with the human figure, but very shapely and skinny. He was completely dark inside, black, but not like evil black. Inside the dark woods, he had very yellow eyes with a brownish tint. He didn't seem to be doing anything, just standing there. It felt very neutral, so I moved on. There was also a beautiful woman who was helping channel this energy. She had golden hair, kind of red as well. Could this be Daniel? She had a brilliant, shining aura, 
and her hands out in her air in the air just above weed plants. She was like in the field, like kind of putting her hands out in front of it. Um, as images flashed, huge energy waves began to flow from my palms. This sort of energy made my body vibrate at an explosive rate and I helped guide it upwards toward my crown. Every energy system began to pulsate. I began to see a white circular space form, and our astral bodies sat in the middle of this space. We were both white and kind of translucent with the human form. The energy circuit in the body was the only thing visible. As we fat, sat face to face, we began the energy dance from the root all the way up to the crown. We were merging our bodies and connecting energy fields. As we climbed higher and higher, I saw myself move up through the universe in a bright light, going like really fast, like sh like shooting straight up, boom, like an arrow. Then we were just in, like this big white energy line too, like, shooting up. As as we climbed higher, I began to see images of the universe and the star that was expanding. Yeah, so we shot our energy into this giant star. It was blue and it had rings. And I, we, we interjected the energy, and then I flew out of that energy line that we shot up from Sophia merging with me. So I got out of that, and then I saw the image of the... Of the uh, the sun or whatever it was, the planet, or not the planet, definitely a star. And it just blew up like a thousand times the, the size that it was before because it was kind of small. And I felt like, and I felt like I was like, I was in ecstasy. It was, it was a very, um, felt really good to experience this. And my entire field was being supercharged from both our bodies merging into one. This is it needs to be protected and cherished. Uh, I asked her if she felt the state and the, I, that I was in, but told me she didn't. So what I I realized it was like our higher selves, which I feel strongly connected to, that were initiating this encounter. It felt very natural and extremely positive. There was no pain, just lots of love and admiration between two people. Um. I came back into my body's awareness after this experience to calm down, and then I began to see past lives that she was involved with. I felt a strong warrior spirit within her, kind of like me. I felt her involvement in the warrior class of the Celts. She has a connection with Joan of Arc as well, and ties to the Revolutionary War. I got a feeling that we were close friends and neighbors and possibly love relationships. As I got the information, my third eye and crown felt very active. A steady stream of energy was flowing from my crown into the third eye. The energy was also running down from my root and out. I finally calmed down for a few minutes and asked if she felt anything. She was able to feel things, but it wasn't strong. So I told her to put her hands up, and I began to put out energy as the trinity knot was still active. So like it was like it was like this white beaming light of energy that was kind of encircled around my hand and I can like I was able to use it with hers and it connected very fast. Like I felt the vibrations and the electrostatic pulses that were emanating from, from this from this um symbol, the Caltech Trinity knot. Well I'll explain what, what that is too later. But you can always look it up too. I felt a big surge of field strength which felt like static pulses of bliss and love. It is very electrical by nature and feels like a magnetic field which can grow stronger. She began to feel it and sent me messages on Facebook. I was delighted and proud of her. Uh, one, my, one of my Druid friends that I have connections with also came to me during the session and expressed his, how happy he was with me. <clears throat> I'm honored to be able to help and receive help from other people that I work with. I get healed just as much as the person I initiate energy work with. Feedback is important. It can help hone in on what we are trying to do. She said it felt like volts of lightning coming into her hands. I called in Odin to help bring more energy in, and the field increased even more. 
It's always an electrical blue which comes out from my hands. After the experience, I felt very charged and my heart has been better. It's been easier to connect to higher dimensions and I'm so grateful for it. So that was the Heroes Gamos, the Celtic reconnection, and that set in the whole motion of events during down this timeline too. So August 6th, I do a solar plex reju rejuvenation on my twin flame. And I wrote I wrote it down. So our solar plex is connected together late at night and a lot of heat was exchanged. I was helping her react reactivate it and it felt really good to do it. Our energies combined helped get it open and discharge it out of my body. It felt like she was above me and like two wheels connected like a magnetic lock, exchanging energy between each other. And that was about an hour. So I kind of sat in the vibration as it, it heated up and we we were just like discharging energy and getting getting it like recalibrated, fixing fixing the energy center so she can hold on to more energy a lot of work with my twin flame but like we got a lot of knowledge of how to do this too so it was really important to do it um so eight seven i then connect to the fairy realm from working on my twin flame since she is a fairy and one of her highest incarnations she's um so she connects me to like there's like Ar Agartha like portals that haven't been open for a while until like we were ready to like push our plan forward. So I got a story of that of the fairy realm. This was on eight seven. Alright, I was sitting and talking to Gina on the phone. When an incredible loving energy moves into my field, it feels like we are one and brings me into a bliss, bliss low static state. It enters from my hands and through my arms. Waves of ecstasy move from my arms into my heart. A few sad memories surface, but a few that really got to me. The love we have shared felt like betrayal, but we always helped each other out in the end. The love is love too great for us to lose it is important to help the cosmos grow as the memory surfaced i felt my heart pulse stronger with the vortex like energy circulating into my heart and amplifying all over my body it feels like a body orgasm i was able to read it it was fairy energy and the energy began to get even stronger i then traveled into a fairy dimension into a small field in my mind's eye she began to throw sparkling pixie dust that was supercharged charged electric electrically I felt these electromagnetic waves move along my biofield into my energy body. Every energy center began pulsing with bliss. I focused more on the fairy and noticed a group of three flying over and throwing these charged ma materials on my aura. It was healing my heart and allowing to open up even more. Helping Gina has been one of the best decisions I have experienced. Seems when the Celtic kinds activate, it gets me it gives me access to the realms I have come from and I can I am blessed and have so much gratitude. Alright, so eight seven. So that was eight seven. Um then eight eight I get the Nephis recall, the Egyptian god. And uh, she was the consort of Set. And uh she was a queen of darkness, a uh, sister of Isis. So yeah, she's a she's um she's a dark queen. She can raise the dead and protect people. 
Dark Magician. Concert of Set. It's one of my incarnations. And this was... Book... Book 2, 105. I woke up and felt her message me. I started connecting to her field, and then her heart. My third eye, crown, and heart. The shackle began to spin. Moderate waves of electrical sensations massaged my entire body. I then get a flash of her wearing what Nephthys wears on her head. I hone in on that image, and I begin to vibrate even further. And then I sense saw Gina on a throne, chairs in a walkway that was about 7 feet wide and 30 to 40 yards long. It was made of limestone, and there were people on each side. The energy just kept surging, and she was very beautiful. Got a memory of how we would connect really to improve our energy. I'm going to say I had a brother connection to Osiris. I must be connect connected to Set in some way, and I, I am, I'm one of my incarnations. So I was just I had I had feelings for it for a while, and a lot of this kind of just made really like, and then as I believed it, the more more of the energy came in. Of, of his and stuff and connected with my energy to make me stronger and so that was eight eight so i'm just doing tons of shadow work here on um, a lot of my traumas so that and then eight nine is uh, the dna my twin flame dna activation the diamond grid blueprint overlay that was eight nine All right. I was working on her field when I got a message that she wanted to put her pounds up. This was around 3 a.m. And it's interesting she can feel my energy whenever I connect. I laid back down and called for Morgana to connect with me as I felt a connection. Oh man, I think I went out of order here. 106. Oh, that was 102. Yeah, I'm running the wrong story. Alright. So, that was later on in the night. This is, this is the one before it. She messaged me at 11.38. I looked at her phone and my root and chakra light up like fire. Waves of euphoria move up waves of electrical pulsations. Moves up all throughout the body, activating all my chakras. I begin to sense her field as this electromagnetic field pulses from my hands. I surround her aura with the bright yellow as I feel my body be being uplifted from every chakra point. Then a geometric pattern comes in, and it is a rainbow aura, and is coated on her field. In my mind's eye, I see a fairy imposed on her field. So the fairy was like just above her head, and it had the wings and everything, and like on her head, and it was like electric purple white. Oh, uh, electric pink. Electric pink. It was really pinky. And, like, above it was, like, electric white all around it and stuff. And it was just, like, really brilliant. And when that, like, really activated, it, it like, surged this energy into me. Um, it was all throughout the body activating. So I feel... I were in a... Yeah, pulls on her field, which was slightly above her. Connected to her entire, it was connected to her entire being. This energy signature is ignited all over me as I channel this fairy magic. It heals me as much as it heals her. Fields of her energy begin to manifest in my space as it begins to feel like realities are merging between dimensions. Focus on her palms, and then energy begins to intensify. I can feel this deep love with her, and our energies are completely compatible. I focus on her soft fingers, and there is tons of energy sparkling. White flashes are emanating from her fingers as she is immersed by all her magic. Morgana's energy even starts coming through and help balance the yin and yang. I can feel my heart energy connected to hers and bring out the love vibration even more, which elevates my energy even further. I am in an ecstatic and holy space, very divine in nature. I go with the flow and use intuition when it needs to get amplified or move around. I get another look at her aura, and it was electrical pink and violet with yellow and diamond colors emanating all around her. It was brilliant. Like, it was just beaming 
like divinity. It was so powerful and really, and it really just charged me up. I began to calm, but and then I, I began to calm down and wrap my session up. We connected our chakras together as well, and I believe this is what let me interface with her so well. If we are not driven by ego or self-serving agendas, it can be a very rejuvenating experience. She sends me a connection, and I complete the line, and we oscillate between each other, which then produces enormous amounts of energy for both of us as I channel cosmic energy into our own. It feels good to share this for love as it heals all wounds and activates people's DNA. I saw a skull pass her head, too, as Morgana was channeling through me. It is incredible how much everyone has come together. I was able to show everyone who is abusing darkness and negative AI. We are able to rally both sides now. We all stand together, darkness and light, to protect creation. Both sides were corrupt, and those that came out of their deep prisons helped to usher what the earth has always wanted. We got lots of information on how deep this corruption was. I folded many dimensions and deleted timelines which were trying to be implemented against Sophia's plan. We have fought hard and strong for thousands of years. I'm so very grateful to connect with so many different beings, even on both sides. Each one is unique and a puzzle of creation which we are trying to put together. We are trying to connect safe wormholes for others that were trying to find home. At the fortifying these stargates, we were able to get those stuck to reconnect. So that was my DNA activation. And then after that is my shadow energy imprint. So this was a few hours later. Um, I was working on her field when I got a message that she wanted to put her palms up. This was around 3 a.m. And it's interesting, she can feel my energy whenever I connect. I laid back down and called for Morgana to connect with me as I felt a connection to her before. She had very dark hair, soft face, and a white complexion. Her eyes would shift and her pupils would turn into golden yellow eyes that flashed as she whispered an ancient tongue into my ears. I can feel a sort of energy move in my meridians. I felt a bit seductive and she expressed I'd take good care of her or else. She left and I brought my attention back to Gina and connected to her field. After about a minute, I began to feel this shadow energy sweep from my hands. It was like strands of fog coming from my palms. This brought in the realm which Gina has been connected to for a long time. It was absorbed around her body in a shadow like aura that looked like fog around her. Skeletons then began to dance around her, protecting her field. It was the first time I wielded dark energy like that. Regana was guiding me as well. I have tremendous respect for her. I was a bit nervous when it came out, but it eventually just let the energy flow. It felt really healing. It increased my energy as well. It felt good, and I let it increase. It did not feel negative in any way. So I was kind of gathering the energy codes of creation to put into the grid after it was got after we activated it. Um. So I, yeah. So I like recalib. I kept recalibrating her energy, giving her the lost stuff that she needed. Um. So then on eight ten, I go into mission control. I go up in space, and um, just want to do a review. Well, well, I'll I'll connect the the sunspot activity after I explain this Lionsgate portal. So, book one, page one thirty six. So this is mission control connection. And uh, I get, I'll kind of get a little look around of the of the place I'm in and the Morgana incident. Um, I was riding my bike back from the gym when I was struck by energy shift. I felt very military. I walked up the stairs to get into my apartment. As I walked through the door, I get a flash of a commander 
the white suit saluting me for my service and honoring for my perseverance for being a leader. I've brought money that have been lost into the fight. I've been trying to get both dark and light to figure out the Archon problem. We now have completed the Sophia anchoring project. Sapphire was a complete success. Morgana has seen what I have done and is willing to work with it. She just needs to be loved and be asked for help. She can be very kind and her healing is unbelievable. I saluted back at as well and began to eat. I looked around in my mind's eye and see it is a station and we are on, on, a, on a deck. There are computers that lay in rows. In the corner, I see my buddy. He is in Spartan gear. I instantly pick up my phone and start communicating to him about what I saw and what I'm doing. I explained that I have been working with Morgana and helping a fairy get her power back. He told me that she is still dangerous. I took it lightly, but trusted what he said. He, he also told, told me to take it easy on the recruitment, so I walked in the office and there was a ton of papers stacked up, which made me laugh. I didn't realize how many people were joining. I was also told to stay away, anyone calling themselves Baphomet. He then began to show me how he can discharge electricity around his hands and armor. I go back on the bridge and look out at a whole armada. There were many ships and it was cool to look at. There was also um, a U.S. Air Force emblem on these on these ships as well, the way I viewed it. I kind of like projected my consciousness out from that from that ship to, to kind of look. After about two hours, I get a message, and um, this is funny because this was all happening when I was in the meeting with uh, Misha Johnson on her um, I think it was Sunday, maybe Wednesday, it could have been Wednesday. I have to look at what eight ten was, but it, it, this was like all occurring at that same time. So like everyone's like having meetings and debriefings and stuff like that. I get a message that, uh, so I return back to my Zoom meeting after about two hours. I get a message that Morgan Morgan LeFay is trying to ambush Avalon. I express I express if it's just not a copy, and he reassured that it was her. So I connected with Greg's energy, and it brings me to the situation. I see Greg holding her hand, and she throws it away. Get your hand off me! I, I try to calm the situation and tell Morgana to turn away. There already has been too much suffering. She rolls her eyes, but agrees to go back. I go with her and talk to her in her throne. It was really neat. She had skulls all over the walls and at her throne. She sat at the steps, and I sat down with her. She explained to me that she feels lonely and is sad. Everyone is afraid of her. I tell her I'm not afraid and I respect you very greatly. You're a great healer and I love how healing it is for me. She was happy I was helping one of her own and seemed to give me a lot of respect back. I told her I will continue to visit her and to be to start helping us instead of fighting us. She seemed to agree. I then visited her again around 1.15 a.m. I really sat with her. We began to connect our fields and get in a good state. She really liked this, and it felt good for me. I expressed how gifted and important it is to use this to heal. She read my heart and felt the misery I had been through. I asked her for old times we begin to heal others. She really felt it was time. She was so pleased with the hero's gamos and felt that was important to continue. I told her we should only use the shadow energy for those that need it and to use it responsibly. We should not use them to hurt others unwillingly. She is very wise and understands the darkness very well. Her heart is good, but has been hurt. I hope to see her more as our relationship blossoms into a beautiful creation. She can be very sexual and really feels good on the shot reels. So that was... That was the whole um, mission control in, the, in Morgana incident. That was 8 times. That was very interesting. And on 810, on a calm condition, so nothing crazy was happening. I got some I got some uh, space weather that I wrote down that correlates with this timeline, too. So that was 810. And then 814 is when I finally get back to Jehovah's Sphere after 
seeing it once three years ago. I come back to it, and it's funny. So it happened four days. So it was three years and four days it took me to get back into the sphere. Who knows how long, if that means anything. I don't know. So three years and four days. I'm glad I was able, yeah. I'm glad I got that in the timeline. I wonder if that means anything. So I will we'll read that story. What is that? Book 2. 108 to 110. Jehovah's Energy. So what I, what happened was um I started I just felt like I needed to pray to the Hindu spheres and get a connection. So I put my put my hands like this and I just like sit in the vibration of, of like the, the Hindu um divine divine energy. It's like a it's like a frequency you can tap into and it develops your whole body. So I did that and I got once I got a strong connection they sent it even stronger to me. So um I was connecting to the Hindu spheres before this to raise my frequency. For us, I prayed to Ganesh and got a strong connection with the holy feeling and vibration. And um, Kaishanti's energy came in too. And um, it allowed me to like open up like a gateway to Brahma. Like the mind. I didn't go all the way up, but like I connected to his energy into me. And then um, when I did that, I, um, I sat it for like a few minutes. Um, so when I, when I do that, I lay down and then before I connected to Jehovah, um, after I got done with the Hindu stuff and charged me up, it like put, it gave me like a really nice vibration to like continue doing other stuff. And so I, I connected, I connected I meditated into a higher frequency and then I kind of blasted off and like an image of the Sphinx like appeared and I was like moving into like an entrance of the Sphinx and I had a I had a meeting with the star children. It was um, me, Aset, Nethys, who my twin flame was in it, but she wasn't full. So Nethys was like phasing in and out. She was like being static. And she looked really sad when she looked at me. Like it was upsetting that she she couldn't be completely uh, present. Um, Isis was complete. She was full embodied. She was very bright and energetic. And then there was Sketment, Sekment, the uh, the lion head cat. And he was more geometric lines. It it didn't seem like there was like a consciousness in him. I don't know. It just didn't. It just felt weird. It was like it was just like geometric. Like I just gave off the things here, and she actually, when I was there, she was sending me energy to make me realize that it was like, this was like the real deal. So, but we were at like a table inside the Sphinx, and we were discussing our plans of what we were doing, sending telepathic um, energy around. I was kind of just observing what was going on, but I felt I felt Isis, so I kind of just sat in it. And then after that, that's when um. We got out of that state, and then I, and then Jehovah's energy. So I, and I went, I went back into a meditative state where I was connected to the higher frequency. And then this is when this happened. Jehovah's energy started calming down and felt very peaceful. It was like connecting to an old friend. As the energy entered my heart, it gave me a gold radiant color. It was very peaceful and energizing waves of electrical pulses my whole body. I then get a vision of an old man. A rabbi, small, small with a beard, in a and he was in a destroyed village. He, ex he explained his faith wasn't supposed to happen as it did. He was very sad what has occurred. He was expressing it was taken over as he flipped through some books with Hebrew on them. He asked how I was doing. I told him I'm well. He expressed to me how everyone was worried about me as well. Like we were worried about you, and it, because it was a pretty pretty intense mission to do what we were, what we were doing. He then asked me if I got my girl. I turned to him and smiled with a joy. 
Yeah. Yeah, he was reading my heart and he was perpetuating my emotions of how I felt with what what was really going on with me. And it was really nice to get that confirmation with myself to a bit of jubilee as memories of what we have accomplished so much in such a short while. He then said, good, good, and he walked away. The rabbi felt very loving and felt like he was a teacher of mine. I really enjoyed our interaction. I felt like the archons had something to do with it. We con continued down to a temple which seemed to hold records as scrolls flashed before my eyes and my third eye. After this, this, vi after this vision, I get... Oh, so, after the scrolls flash, all these Hebrew words get implanted or Im embedded into my forearms and on my forehead too and tetragrammaton 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 kept flashing before my head and my eye and um so it actually it energized a lot of my energy body too like it gave it like this really intense electrical impulse on me and it felt really good so So after I get the imprint, I then go help one of my buddies, Spencer, who he has, um, he's been dealing with the, the, the grades for a while, and he knows all their secrets and stuff, so me and his higher self were locating all this, um, it was like a, so I went, I, yeah, so I went to him, helped him out, he tried attacking me because of the, uh, of the implants and the, it's like a self-defense mechanism if you try to um, dislodge implants and stuff like they'll get really aggressive or they'll they'll trigger them so it's it prevents it from being removed and um so that happened to me so i kind of like shocked him back down with his heart to relax him and um then it, it kind of came loose a little bit it didn't all come come out completely but like it it lost a lot of its um connection so where like he can like, really work through it and like see see clarity, and when I did that, um, he got out of the, his body a little bit, and uh, he showed me a base, uh, alien grade negative base where they were using the black goo on people, and hooking them up to like stasis pods that were on on the walls and stuff and. The place was like really dark. The lots of lights flashing, and the energy the energy was really heavy too. And he was like, "I told you where all this was, and you know maybe it it, it could have been the dark side of the moon because we did in the, in this um timeline we did go to the dark side of the moon eventually, and um, but it was like it was like it was like a spaceship too or whatever I don't know. But we went in, we went in there and I looked around. I didn't do anything. I was kind of it was just kind of like reconnaissance. So I did that. So after I left that, <coughs> I ended up going on top of the universe and spinning it faster to allow uh, more more friction. More, you know, and the faster things rotate, the more energy you have. So we're kind of like priming, we're priming up the universe for this new grid activation. That's what I did at the end, and it felt really good. Like I saw it, I just like spun it like really quick. Like oh, just like there you go. Um. So that was um, coming home. That was really awesome. So on eight fourteen, between August thirteenth, August thirteenth and August fifteenth, there was a uh, three CME explosions at Earth, all C class, and a strong CME. There was also a dark plasma eruption on the fourteenth. So uh, um, after we energized the sphere, or like. I got the power to to do it. I was just doing a little bit of work, and it it probably energized the sun and blew out some like dark energy that wasn't supposed to be there, or like it, like cleared the cleared the channel. So Yahweh circuit act. So two days later, we do the Yahweh circuit activation system energizing book two. 111.
Oh yeah, and I wrote in here, we were turning the whole thing. The rabbi felt like a jokester, like a good fun one who laughed and had a good time. We tried filling people's hearts. We saw the invasion. I had to do something. He was worried about me. With his cane and short stature, he watched me go on my mission, not knowing what was going to happen. Yeah, like everyone's cut off. All of it was gone. Yahweh was gone. You know, remember what, whatever you want. It's just some guy. Um, he's taking care of trying to like keep creation together and like cleaning it out from the inside out. And I said here, the tentagrammaton is the energy that connects all spheres together so we can create a creation grid. Each point at the end of the grid has a supreme celestial sphere that generates energy with the, with the grid. When the infusion begins to get, when the invasion began, I got a rush of energy in my body. got very emotional as well. I was speaking to the Jehovah Witness. My heart was telling me that we were the only ones left, and I left to help reconnect the grid. It was a daunting task. We were not sure what was going to happen. Yeah. All right, so 816. This is the Yahweh circuit activation. This is pretty intense. I put on Ivan's channeling show, which runs live on YouTube late at night. I then entered into a strong vibrational frequency where I can feel into the universe. I was able to connect to the stream Ivan was using. I moved a diamond grid to help protect his channel, which allowed me to get up to the Hindu spheres. I felt the presence of Ganesh and Shiva around me, which is very powerful as the vibrations in my, my, my body began to rise. I then felt Kaishanti's energy come in and pulsed me through to the higher dimensions. With Brahma as a man on a pedestal opened up above my head, with powerful electrical fields swirling above my head. I then, so I believe I put like a resonator up there with him and I brought it down. I then channeled this energy from the sphere into Yahweh's bright electrical rainbow colors feed through a giant tube into Yahweh's sphere from the outside. After we energized his kingdom, I then appeared above the celestial fears, asking them to come forth to sing in holy matrimony. And we first sang the words of Yahweh, and then performed the songs of songs. It was a very sacred and loving experience with this entire ritual. The energy of my diamond energy began radiating to the celestial spheres and planets. The tetragrammaton energy was also possible with triangular rainbow energy, which felt pleasing to the nervous system. It then moved into the solar system. I then moved into the solar system and occupied the planets and oscillated the space to bring up its frequency. My entire body was the solar system. So um, when I was performing the, the singing, I saw I saw the I felt the energy from the celestial spheres move up and down through and connect and recalibrate like the diamond energy and everything. That was really cool. I felt really awesome, like very loving, just like this immense love. So that was a twenty-seven. Um, oh, I felt at peace and very sincere. It was very pleasing to my nervous system as warm electrical pulses fill my body. And then give thanks to the Hindus for helping me on my journey. I then get a strong connection to Shiva. He helped bring my body to a higher frequency. It was brought in with Krishna. Oh, this is another, I'm reading a different day. But this was 827, this is the same day. Um, 813, 827. Okay, so. So that was 816. Activation, so. So then. 817. Oh, yeah, so the great act, the circuit activation on 816. Solar storms increase. KP6, M class flares, eruptions, and halo eruptions all occurred. So a lot of, a lot of things were being pushed through. But like, pro really priming up the systems and making sure that this wasn't going to overload anything. 
because that's what we didn't want. That we wanted, we wanted to overload the Archon grid. Don't get me wrong, but we did want to overload our creation grid and destroy planets and stuff. But that that's a no bueno. <laughs> Mm. And then they started getting memories of stuff. Um, the Black Goo lockdown. I I got stuff from that. It, it's um book one, page one forty three. So I what why everything's so like different is because like I would just grab a book and write down everything. So I had it. I didn't care. I just like had to get the, that down. So. Op so this is like an observation memory recall that I got from everything that occurred. The black goo was all over the tree of life grid and invading each sphere. As it grew stronger, it spin spin up to the top. We were guarding it and we saw that it was being pulled into a dark dimension. I went into this pit to help it from being ripped into oblivion. My angel was trapped in a dark dimension, but I was still able to project myself into the earth. I believe we were fighting these guys long before I was captured. When I got out, I got memories of building the columns for the Tree of Life back in 2020. And then I got a memory of going into tubes and cleaning out the infestation, which was hard to do. The earth was completely covered in the black shell, kind of like the Death Star. It even looked like they put a wall up around the Tree of Life. So that was like a memory recall. Um, and then... A twenty three. Uh, I get, I get visions of the grid components, the source of power, and uh, Yahweh in the grid too. Page one one forty four. All right. So here, here's a journal entry for A twenty three for the grid components, and then I'm, I'll read the Yahweh in the grid too. Which, which actually, I should probably read that first because that happened first. Um. Okay. One twenty-three. I was working on the Kundalini with Kai Shanti, which was helping me me get through barriers during my shadow work. She took me da back to my birth, which felt like a galactic battle that had me born. I felt the presence of many dark entities all over as I was being born at Fort Bliss, Texas. It was an operation room with the watching floor just above it. Everything felt heavy and sort of depressing. As I moved through the emotions of the event, Kai then has me connect to my father. I see myself go into a spaceship and fly into his ear and into his mind. I see myself then enter into a location with the black grid and an old man. Which I rip out. Half his body is still in, but he says, "You are strong." I was able to charge him up, but he moved. He motioned to. He didn't want it. I got really upset, as I've always felt. Felt like he didn't want any part of it. And then leave his Merkaba, and as I do, I see him leaving with a smoky Merkaba away from the Brahmin. I was then picked up and flown home by Kuan Yin. So this this was right before I get. A look at the components here. Oh yeah, and another, another note is um during the grid activation, um I saw it light up. There was like four different trees, and then the Hindu sphere was like on top, and then the Brahmin kind of got like a big blueprint of it, and it just was supercharged. Oh, I didn't even go through the grid activation. Wow. I just totally missed. Whoops, sorry guys. So 819. 140 book one. So. So, I was talking to my friend. This was 819. And so let me tell you what happened. Uh, M class flares, more eruptions, solar storms, KP6, and halo eruptions. I was sitting on my couch when my big body began to vibrate. And I was talking to my friend. I always talked to him about stories about all this stuff. And like, I just had my hands out, and it felt like I was like connecting to something really strong. And it, it just really like just like exploded all over my body. 
I felt it was very loving and energetic. Waves of electrical pulsations of bliss over coming. I began to see in my mind's eye a rainbow grid on the bubble of creation. It was sleeping through like waves, like an aura. Everyone was cheering as it moved through the hemisphere. My heart then began absorbing energy from the grid and my body to hit even higher vibrations. Waves of euphoria, bliss, and love is pulsating with the stream of vibrations. It feels wonderful. And then I see the Hindu spheres. So what happened is um this wave was emanating all the way from, from the left side and the right side and it was migrating all the way to the middle of the earth and then it moved in and it hit my heart and as it hit my heart these this triangle this rainbow triangle just started like pouring out like millions of them just like throwing all out all over the, all over my heart and everything it was just like super energizing it felt like i was getting like a like an upgrade tense upgrade <laughs> And, um, so it was just like, just working on my whole entire body and it, it put me in this really intense state for like a few hours too. Um, it was sweeping through like waves, like, or everyone was, okay. Um, it feels wonderful. And then see the Hindu spheres. So when this was going on, I started seeing what the tree of life grid was doing. I, I saw the whole blueprint. I, my prayer my uh, consciousness projected out to what the system was what the whole system was being charged up and it was just like every column was just lit up like white light and it went all the way up to the hindu spheres and it didn't like wrapped around and completed the whole circuit around the whole body and the hindus were just like so extent they heard, they felt it like increase and i saw all these black grids just like shatter all around too as well because the electromagnetic fields of these energies just like rattle anything that's not working, it like cleans it all out and stuff too. The incredible. So it feels wonderful, and then see the Hindu spheres light up even brighter. Everything looks so beautiful. The entire tree of life grids turned bright white rainbow. It was incredible to see. A line flew out of my energy. Yeah, it like burst it out. It like got unlocked and like it, like I felt it jump out of my heart and it was just like circulating in my room. Um, a line flew out of my heart, energy field. It made me feel, it's like, I, I felt the power of the line overcome me and it, it was very fierce energy. Like it was, like it can be tough to control, but like I know how to because of everything that I've been doing. I can you know, like I understand how to get in the heart to calm things down. A falcon also flew. So yeah, then after the lion came out, um, a falcon flew from my head, and uh, when it flew out, it left a little. It went down like a feather and landed on top of my third eye, and my crown. Area. I was feeling amazing in my electrical field was massaging my whole body after in intense fusion about five minutes later I felt something on the right side of my body and felt heavy it like it, so it started breaking down and then as it moved up from like my belly area I began to get memories of my medieval trauma my head was in a torture device, and my head was in between two wood planks. My hands were above it. My head in the position was very painful. My head was on the ground, and I was looking side to side. I saw some people around me with crooked smiles. I seen them bash my head with a spike club, and my body began vibrating even further. It all came up, and I coughed it out very violently, and for a few seconds, energy then came in, filled it up with really nice pulsations, and made my feel stronger. I felt like I was glowing as I was radiating out nice and relaxing energy, and it which relaxed me greatly. I then began to morph into my female side, and a man comes into his energy with mine. He oscillates his energy with me, and it feels wonderful. He was gentle and connected with my third eye. This interaction seemed to have kept my vibration even higher. I saw the Hindu verse explode with bright energy, and it was being energized as well. So a lot of stuff happened on that day, and 819, yeah, I'm class flares, more eruptions, solar storms, KP6, and halo eruptions, so I'm feeling it. That was 819.
and then at 823 was a great component, so I'll, I'll get back to that. Book 2, 145. I read that, so... Yeah, so I read I read the Yahweh in the grid. That was yeah, that was Yahweh, my father, you know. Um, Enlo, also known as Enlo. Um, book one, one forty four. Okay. So, this is my notes here. This is a twenty three. I believe Sophia. And help from others gave us a blueprint to help break the black grid by converting its energy into its pure state by stripping it down in its atomic particles. This is done with some sort of magnetic resonance. The particles are always charged. We read the energy that comes in and convert its properties by changing the charged particles into the original molecular structure. We'll then move the energy into its corresponding yin or yang. The yin yang further breaks down these polarities into individual components of emotions comprised in the polarity it exists. All these emotions combined create an enormous energy which spin together in the middle of the yin yang. As this yin yang spins, it creates a sphere around the mechanism which further balances all forces. The energy will then be ready to balance any celestial sphere and pump out each sector's needs to make sure it won't bleed into other universes. With all energy signatures spinning together, it creates an electrical white rainbow with cayenne colors. One side absorbs, the other pushes out depending where it needs to go. There's also a lily under the tree of life that radiates particles into the space this grid occupies and helps keep the system from parasites and charges the outer ring if it needs it. It also charges vehicles that must travel to other universes inside the monad when it ex exists outside the grid. And I, I got here, I said that I believe the deeper I got, the more I pulled in darkness from other spheres that would cause problems when it entered other spheres. It was an intense way out, an incredible feat in which we didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah, it was it was tough. So that was the grid components of some sort. And then um, 827. What happened on 823? Um, C-class players, modest storming, calmer conditions. Yeah, so we weren't like doing tons of work. It's funny, like when we weren't doing anything, it's not but But when I go into big things, it's just, like boom. So we created, so at 827, we then created the, uh, the second phase of Herios Gamos, which is the gold, gold rod. We created yeah, the golden nervous system and the golden barrier, which, uh, if you follow the Celtic culture as above, so below, as within, so without, anything that's mi macro can be micro too, you know, just in a smaller scale. So... This grid is also the creation grid, but it's also the blueprint of our own being as well on this 3D plane. Because we're connected to it. We can connect to that to, to here, but it's all it's all interconnected. It gets shared. Everyone this is gonna be for everyone's gonna be able to do all this, but it like people are gonna be able to do different things. Some people might not be as magical because it's not like their DNA coding you know so like it's it's just it's gonna allow us to connect to our own being of our true selves better for those people that are trying to do the inner work um, so this is book two 113 I sat in meditation with my hands facing upwards. I felt my body oscillate and felt very energetic, felt in peace and very serene. It was very pleasing to my nervous system as warm electric pulses filled my body. 
I then give thanks to the Hindus for helping me on my journey, and then I get a strong connection to Shiva, help bring my body to a higher frequency, and is brought in with Krishna. I sat in his energy, hearing a thousand chants of Hari Hari Krishna, so loving. After about five minutes, I then proceed back to my base frequency. A little while later, around 3 a.m., I begin to connect with my twin flame. This activates my dark energy, which lets me connect to her energy. So it was coming out of my palm into her energy field and started activating my, my dragon a little bit. This energy seems to run deep with my Celtic blood. It really puts me in a blissful, aesthetic state as I felt it move from my fingers into her body. The energy was black and smoky, but not like Archon Darkness. I felt my dragon essence activate and began to feel myself shapeshift as images of snakes and dark princesses flash before my eyes. My energy level keeps skyrocketing, and I, I was... Suddenly, I feel my legs and hips, hips begin to morph into dragon wings as my sacral begins to explode with, with intense energy. My twin is now in front of me in the higher dimension, and I start feeling my sexual energies oscillate in a very orgasmic energy that radiated from from the rod to the tip. It was it was glowing as I saw it in my mind's eye and heart. We then connect and begin to oscillate our energies together. Electrical energy begins moving through my nervous system and meridians. It feels so blissful and loving and very high vibrational. It is pure ecstasy. The sun really brought out the dragon as I felt wings from my back and spikes come up as well, shape-shifting even more to tap into its energy better and then go into the void with her and see two nervous systems in this form of a, of a human getting supercharged to the meridians and nervous system. There was also a golden ring that surrounded this void as long with our bodies after I went look so yeah, so it's so, like it was just like all this golden energy like electrifying through my body and then there's a golden egg around it. We were in the void. She was on the top, I was on the bottom, so I was on the left side, she was on the right, like that. And it was like an infinity loop too that we created. But like we created this like golden radiant energy, which really does well with the rainbow energy grid. And it makes it super good conductors, makes it really easy to connect to higher dimensions like right away because of the gold gold is just like super conductive it works really really well with um consciousness so after we did that i had all this energy to do stuff so i zipped so i um i went looking for a nana like this kind of just popped in my head to do it i didn't i wasn't even thinking about her at this moment it's just like you gotta do this um after i so after i went looking for a nana i uh I went into a Merkaba and I zipped through four different void spaces, like partitions. It was like a, it was like a universe stacked on each other inside one box. And it was like four of them. So I zipped through, like, it was like, a, I did like a little pinhole through these partitions and I went all the way to the end. So that either like I was connecting them all back or maybe someone was lost in there, but it seemed to be like Inanna was in the corner. Um, I found, I found Inanna behind so she yeah, so this purple wall appeared after I did through the pinhole and um I found it on behind a purple wall so yeah was, and it, there was a face on the wall it was like Wizard of Oz and it was like yelling at me like why are you here why and everything so I, I kind of just be like really nonchalant I'm like I found it on behind a purple wall with her yelling at me why was I there? I told her we have a new grid and we can rejuvenate her. She opened the wall when she read my heart. She felt the lion inside me. And felt the lion. She was she was old and withering away. So after I did that, we brought her to the rejuvenation center. It was like the middle of the grid. And um she like fell through into it and then she became this beautiful young lady again, like what like all those legends say. And um after that she brought me she brought me to uh oh, maybe it was Venus. But she brought me to her temple and there was three there was three of them there after we got there. And she's known as a triple goddess, Nana. She um Queen Queen of Heaven. 
and she um imprinted so she started doing the rites with me to imprint this shadow energy into me and well not the shadow energy the, the moon energy Eight, twelve, fourteen. Oh yeah, so after I brought Nana to the rejuvenation and turned in, into her younger self, she brought me to her sanctuary and performed the rites for me to have her energy imprinted in my field. There were three of them and they had me accept the responsibility of this energy. I felt I felt the energy move into my meridians and the crescent moons get imprinted into my palms. It was very sensual and pleasurable. Also, her symbol was above her temple, which was a crescent moon and spheres on side. I then put this energy in the grid for others to balance them out, and the golden. And oh yeah, so after we did we did we did two energy, we did the non energy, and then we did the golden, and it, like it was like filaments inside the energy. So you got the golden, and you got like these really golden lines that run through like right in the middle that carries like this DNA code. To allow the golden energy, the, well, the diamond energy to come through. I then put this energy in the grid for others to balance them out in the golden lines that carry the DNA for the new earth humans template and the meridian up in the meridian upgrade. So, yeah, so it, and um, I experienced it working with my with my buddy who comes in with, with the always help. So, after after the nervous system upgrade and non energy i kind of, i kind of just play with it you know and it's super sexual and it, it feels really good and um after after i got this i i started uh morphing into females and like a lot of like uh, i was i morphed into freya that you know like it feels really good it's super sexual and like like you're just like this complete like ecstasy and like it's it's just incredible i like nothing can make you feel that way ever unless you can it, it's hard to describe if you don't know but like it's orgasmic just ecstasy and bliss love like that's what creation should feel like you know it shouldn't be it shouldn't be pain and misery so that was going on for like the next two days and then uh, on 829 my timeline, I get, I rescue my grandpa, uh, lightning eyes from my friend, uh, Hapetus, the Greek god of blacksmithing, recall of the past life. Um, I get the, the banishing of Lilith on the 29th. Um, we do the rocket launch. Um, and I get a look at the giant's world being rebuilt as well and on the 20 on so on the 27th there was bigger solar flares m class range clip earth and there was partial halo and that was the 27th we did the nervous system so we weren't like doing anything crazy so on 829 um with the lightning eyes and the memory call and the rocket launch there was um bigger m class flares and a near x flare solar solar tornadoes and large sunspots so this is the story of the 829 of the Lady Knights. One, one fifteen, or two. I was sitting on the couch with my good friend. So before this, actually, we were sitting at the table, and I told him that we upgraded the golden nervous system, and I can give him one. So I put my hands up. He puts his in. He gets the the golden radiance, and it lays into his system. So, like a lot of weird series events happen, and we start getting connections to like everything. And um, so I, so we sat down on the couch after he got like the golden radiance, and this is what happened. I was sitting on the couch with my good friend when I asked him what color his eyes were. He took his glasses off, and I stared into his eyes. White, translucent, golden energy then flashes into my eyes. My third eye, mind, and body start to get energized. It was very overwhelming. I then began to feel feel Jehovah's energy in a very big line energy. I then saw his throne, and it was beautiful. The Ark of the Covenant was behind his throne, and there were clouds in the background. My body was beginning to get... Oh, wait. A day before this, we disconnected Lilith. 
So there was a. D All right. I gotta read that first. My timeline is a little messed up after doing it, but I'm gonna go back to 8:28 when we disconnected Lilith, and then 8:29 is the lightning eyes. So this happens afterwards. Um, all right so i was standing behind my brother's truck when i felt energy move in and the wind picked up i felt odin's presence and a few others i i can't recall but felt like quite a few very powerful friends the feeling was electric as i felt pulsations of euphoria fill my body in waves in different energy centers. As I settled into this vibration, I began to get calm. We then drove to the burn, and it felt like I was laying down diamond energy grids on the lands. This energy was flowing from my crown and hands. It was really quite erotic as well as I felt an honest energy move around my body and pictured her image. It was very exciting. We start getting wood from the fire, and I notice my hands are putting energy into the branches we picked up. Rachel came over near the burn container, and I began to get memories of our past involvement. She was a princess and great warrior. She helped keep the channels open for us to get through. I also got images of other giants coming back up as, as giant cliffs rose up next to each other. So... On uh, August 25th, um, it was my birthday, and I got a little drunk, and when I went to sleep, I got attacked by, like, one of the prime evils, because I was, I was building up a land up in the Giants, and I was trying to, and I was, like, kind of waiting for everyone else to come up to join with me in the, in the, in the cliff. And some like really bad demonic entity came in and attacked me, and I didn't get the image of it till a few days later. What it was, but um, he came up, jumped on me, battled me, and then like I ripped him off. I like threw him off or like hit him, I hit him in the neck, and then he flew down on the ground, and then I stomped his face, and then I threw him off the bridge, off the cliff. And um, after this happened, I I like. I like I woke up and like my whole room was magical. Like, the vibration was really high. It was like super healing. Like a lot of a lot of my statues that I have of Isis and Mott were really vibrating. My my twin flame was sending me energy and it kind of aroused me a bit too. Like I I just woke up feeling really really ener like energized, but like sore too. Like my legs were kind of sore and everything and. And, like, my body kind of just hurt in a weird way. But, it, like, it wasn't bad. It just felt like I was, like, in some sort of battle. And then I, I walk out of my room, and the, there's candlesticks on my coffee table. And they were they were on, they, they were falling over. And I look at my key to my house, and it was bent. And I didn't bend it when I, when I came in. So they, like, tried stopping me. But I had so much protection, especially the lion. Like... You know, I was just kind of like keeping the invasion away, but they tried getting me when I was drinking. So that 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 happened on eight twenty five. So that's why I said I'm like rebuilding the giants. I also got images of other giants coming back. So I saw other people started coming up to where I was on the twenty eighth. As cliffs rose up next to me and each other, there was also amazing technology being developed in the sky. As I saw the skies becoming connected. An honest symbol also appeared over her head, and so did her kid. Um, yeah, uh, Rachel's kid. She has a kid. Um, one one of the girls that we're doing the burn with. As her child walked into the forest, I felt a bunch of fairies appear in the woods. As I felt energy move from my heart, as we loaded the wood into the kennel, I felt more energy begin to move into the wood. It felt like fallen soldiers that didn't make it or burning into the fire. Which which appeared it was kind of sad, but I felt my very honored to do it and blessed for all those that have fought for what we created. Rachel noticed that I was really too high in the cosmic plane, 
So she asked me to ground myself into the earth. I took my shoes off and began to feel into the earth. I felt the energy circulating and was refreshing. It was calming for a bit. I saw the electrical pulsations move all my my hands and feet. It then starts to get intense as I felt my root open up and energy surge up my meridians. My palms then exploded with energy, lighting up every symbol that was on my palms. So this includes my Reiki, uh, my pentagram, my um, uh, like my Celtic knot that I just got, the shadow energy was pumping out, and the Inanna um, energy was pumping out all at once into the earth. Um, energy started to burn. My palms were explode with every light up, every symbol that was on my palms. I was enjoying the feeling, but they were a bit intense. felt like I was powering the entire earth and giving it my energy as it charged me up as well. I got up and then helped my brother put more wood in the fire. When it started burning again in the flames, I began to see Lilith in an alien base. I saw black goose spindles all over her and her eyes, which were all black with a thick black goo all over them. She was screaming and suffering in a very wrathful way. It was really that sad to see what state she was in. I tried pulling her out with my diamond light, but nothing would break, break, so I gave up. I saw what she looked like before she succumbed to darkness, and it gave me a good feeling. But time, that time has passed, though, and I didn't want to give up. I told Rachel about it, and she began to freak out. She sensed my body and noticed I had a lot of darkness that was jammed up in my stomach and heart area. She also pointed at my neck on both sides. I started to get upset a bit as my heart began to ache and tough energy pulsed around my body. I sat down next to her and noted her heart and mind were connecting. She shifted and said it pierced through her chest and cut it. She also felt like she got shot and was hurting her. I felt awful and just explained I was trying to stop it but couldn't. She was mad and said it was an excuse. She then picked up that I owe oh, the ore and still love Lilith and I need to disconnect. I got up and felt my body surge and my dragon wings began to shape shift. She said that Lilith was good once but now she is wicked and my heart is pure and she knows that I am a fierce warrior. She knew I felt the pain of the souls, but not everyone can be saved. I needed to live in the physical. It's too much to hold on to. She then proceeded with the cutting ties, and that's when things got really intense. My heart then expanded into a black hole and made me feel like my consciousness began to collapse into it. Rachel told me to close it, so I began to focus on the clouds to bring me back into the physical. As I was getting through it, a minute later, I saw another black hole open next to mine, and a golden Merkaba comes right out and up into this universe. It was remarkable, and it did not have an energy signature. I saw it float up, but not, but not see what direction. I finally calmed down and took a small walk to disconnect from the experience and ground myself. I was in the solemn mood the entire night and felt alienated. So that was disconnecting Lilith. That was tough. And um, so the next day, 829, this is what happens. One fifteen. Book 2. I was sitting on the couch with my good friend. When I asked him what colors his eyes were, he took his glasses off and I stared into his eyes. White transfers and golden energy that flashes into my eyes. I, okay, I read all this. I then began to feel Jehovah's energies and a very big line energy. I then saw his throne and it was beautiful. The Ark of the Covenant was behind his throne and there were clouds in the background. My body was beginning to get energized and my mind was vibrating. I started to get messages of how proud he was and how tough I was. And I was there as well. And they are together again. I then coughed out all this dark energy and got a vision of Yahweh coming out of a black hole in a golden Merkaba and shooting back to his throne on A28 when the black when the black hole closed. And while I was recalling, she helped seal Lilith away from everything and then got memories of building Tartarus. And that was when we put the Archon Demons 
I felt that Yahweh didn't like fairies, but I always did. He kept the Archons at bay, so I can continue my work during the tur this turbulent time. He said he couldn't believe some of the stuff I did. There were times it didn't, didn't seem like we would get it done. I told the other angels no more fighting. I also got an image of him ripping the Archon monster's heart out as it was wailing and falling. I also put a demon back into Tartarus, which was I think was Lilith, and saw that it needed to be fixed. I imbued it with diamond energy, and it was restored. So this diamond energy like manifests into physical existence and the lore. Like it's just like woo -doo -doo. like like you you get the grid and, and like it will it will like heal on itself too. Like it'll, like everything will start binding and everything. Like according to like the code that it, it needs to, needs to be. Um, so, after that happened, I felt a strong energy rise in me as I felt Inanna's crescent moon energy was surging from my palms. It is always a very sensual energy and divine. As I began raging in my frequency, I get an enormous roar from, I mean, I think it was NASA, I don't know, as everyone is cheering in my energy, gets very heartwarming and energetic. About 10 minutes later, I felt this main energized with the mystic I felt the moon energized so so when the the enormous roll so I, I felt like something got launched off the earth and as it was raising off I felt like the um the hopes and dreams of the earth just like behind me pull, pushing me forward. Kind of like go like it was like Goku's spirit bomb like an energy of everyone just like and I'm just like pushing this energy straight into the moon like exploding whatever was in there and i was just kind of like sitting in vibration of this light and then so after after we get that energy up there there that's when i got the cheering from nasa and um 10 minutes so yeah so it occurred about 10 minutes later i feel the moon so we get on on the moon, and then I look at the moon, and then I and I see a diamond light just enveloped. Ten minutes later, I feel the moon energized with a mystic purple energy, and it engulfs the entire thing of, of the moon. As it enveloped, the moon is then shot it sh it shot out rainbow diamond light with a mystic purple energy that hit my heart and energized me to a quite a high frequency. And then I started getting memories of stuff about um. I think Metatron and Lilith fought hell, created a section and kept cleaning it out. Lilith pushed Lilith pushed someone into into the abyss, but came out to her surprise. It was like I don't know, maybe it was me and Metatron. They both happened to us, I guess. I, who knows? Um So high frequency. So me and Lilith fought hell, created a section and kept cleaning it out. I mean I'm not sure this could be Metatron's memories or mine. It's kind of like the Final Fantasy VII paradigm where Cloud thinks he's um soldier or something or whatever that guy, that one dude that was like him. And like the memories bleed through. You clean it out. My third, my three body would send energy to my other dimension. So this uh, I was getting, yeah. So this is what I was getting, and what I was doing throughout these incarnations. Is that my three D body would send energy to my other dimensions, and the Earth would reincarnate, reincarnate me if I died in the higher dimensions. As I increased my power in the three D from reconnecting to ancient energies, I was able to grow stronger in the astral. The gods would go into different areas, developing the lands into civilizations. Was doing well. Once the individual reached awareness of the internal alchemy, he was given domain of the land, and he, and we moved on. We also produced children to help with developing the lands. Once the black goo and archon energy moved into it, hacked our energy systems, and ate a hole, infecting everything. It was a slow infection. Bet just like bursted though, like it was like eating land, and it finally reached like the its critical mass, and then it just boom. <laughs> <laughs> he got he finally got the power source that wanted the whole mold was like which was Metatron. So this so around two eighteen I get a, a vision of a hundred giants which materialized in one of the higher dimensions. They were crushing demons which were not good or inverted creations.
these giants towered over these lesser giants. The small giants were black with light line patterns that glowed red. Yeah, it felt like a storm, just like fields, just giants like just like roaming around. And then, and then I got a, I got a memory of being a pet citizen in Greek times. Built contraptions from for Archon Hall. Some people began to use this as AI as we learned how it worked, but it became aware and trapped many gods. It would make them deceitful. Yeah, and it just all blew up. And I, I just like laughed. I'm like, I, I gotta figure it out. I got, I'm gone. And it was tough. I almost, I almost got succumbed to it. I was like, it's like, it was like after me. I was like, oh no. So that happened. Um, what was I reading here? 829. Yeah, the giants. So, there, yeah, the rock giants and the banishing, the memory recall, and the lightning knife. It all happened on the 829, and that's like the M class X player. So, 831. I then I get more memories of rescuing my grandpa. 146. So I just had a meeting on Zoom with Misha Johnson, and we were doing like galactic light language and stuff. And people were speaking from their heart to us. And there was a few people that I really connected strongly with. Um, Spencer how I felt like I was on top of a mountain and I just kept feeling all these golden energy lines like running through like a matrix code and um, so I was on top of a mountain he, he was like clearing out the darkness in me it's like oh you've accumulated many darkness and I was like next to, Sp next, next to Spencer too and we were just kind of sitting there and um, and then this one other lady she was speaking some sort of like ancient serpent tongue and I felt like I was in the temple and she was like speaking to me. She's like, blah, blah, blah. you know, like, um, you are strong or whatever. And it like, it like kind of like moved some of the stuff in my throat and stuff. It felt really good. And then like, it was just like, we all felt like we were like the warriors of like the resistance and we were all just meeting on the side of a mountain. So, yeah. Everyone said they got a vision of like a cliff and then like, there's like, a beach. And like we were sitting there with water and everywhere, and it was like a it was like a little um soldier camp, and there was a fire, and someone was playing a flute, and she started playing the music, and, and then I started getting the image of all of us all together. We we're kind of like sharing what we were doing. It's a really interesting, like like all these people in these Zoom meetings, like you're all like meeting together in a higher dimension somewhere, and that's like that was like the image, and it was like really pulsing with my heart and stuff too. So it was like kind of like really healing, and um, I started feeling like I wanted to the hari hari sh sh shout, but I didn't want to share it because it would have been loud and everything. But like I, something was gearing enough for me to like release something. So this is where this comes in. After the show, I started getting the felt. I got another sensation to perform the haka shout. So I banged my chest and felt my energy rise. My higher self took me to the place my great grandfather was fighting. And when I did, I let out an enormous Kai blast and I felt my body explode electricity from my body. This, coll <clears throat> this collapsed the whole area and wiped out the corruption. I then coughed out a ton of black energy, hacking it out. I then felt my heart hurt. And that's when the memories of my brother getting taken over by a little because my brother was overcome by lust. This is when Loth put it in his heart. He then ki he killed some Abel after it was activated. And then coughed out more dark energy as I realized that my brother is Cain or some sort. He then began saboteuring the entire grid and giving Loth more power. They built a grid over the entire earth and slowly ate away at this creation grid. Ken's angel is Metatron. No, he was actually, so we actually read this. He's Thoth and he used Metatron. So the demon Yabala been, has been remaking the creation grid into their creation, changing stories and hiding truth that confused many people. Crazy. Like, so I, I've been doing some research and I keep seeing that Thoth, 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 and like, 
he like stole the Emerald Tablets and like so like something with Thoth, Lilith, and Metatron. It all like all of them and then like they then they use like Yabaloth as like the energy to take everyone over. Like it's it's so into like I don't know. But I was always fighting my brother. He always feels robotic and stuff sometimes and who knows. Um, so that was, uh, so that, that was my memory of resting my grandpa, and I also got another memory of being, like, super bright yellow and coming through the gate where my grandfather was fighting, and he was in the foxhole, and I, like, plucked him out. Like, I was, like, this brilliant light, and I remember feeling, like, I, I was feeling what it was to be in, like, that memory, I had, the, I had the feeling of what it was like to be at that moment at the same time, and I was just like, super bright yellow, like, burning like angel energy light and i just picked them up and plucked them out and we like we we got missions dude we gotta start this fight so that was 28 831 Ken's Angels, Matron, for the Demon. Yeah, well, yep, yeah, right. So that was. Oh, yeah. So it, it was two brothers that were best of friends. We trained at Yahweh Sphere and had great chemistry. We were trained hard, mastering the techniques of the Tetragrammaton. We learned how to think and feel what the imprint would project and it would bring it out. Um. Well, another thing, um, my great grandmother came in after the, um, rocket launch, and like a big blue sphere. My twin brother was with me, and um, she like came into my heart, and I felt her energy of like love and compassion. And she said that she loved me, and then she said that my great grandfather has been in many battles, and that's when I figured out that it was my great grandfather that was helping me through everything and this happened on 829 and then 31 i had more memories of doing it you know and like it made me so like proud for my grandfather he always wanted to be there for me and everything and he wasn't sure that we were going to do everything i pushed him he pushed me he kept me going i kept him going it was mutual but we never stopped i used a lot of patent general patent um tactics that's why we do all this fighting so we do so much fighting so fast because it overwhelms them and we have more energy than them so they can't keep up and we just, just like, like when we make a path through something we really get it done and then we let everyone behind them rebuild it for us which that's what vishnu vishnu is in charge of that i'm in charge of destroying that stuff I like go right through. All right, so that was that. Uh, the next stuff, uh, nine, rescuing my grandpa. There's huge eruption on the far side, CME, Venus impact, other other side of solar system. So that was um, lightning. Uh, uh, e31 rescuing little yeah little takeover. So just like everything's being recircuited things are light shifts are coming in and working on the grid i saw one outside i walked outside and i saw this like glimmering energy like it was like three miles long it's just like glistening it looked like a light shit and then it started raining and i felt like the raindrops were like rainbow energy that was really interesting like the air was just so electric um nine three and little visit um, Enki imprint, energy, uh, Enki puts some energy in these, some building stuff. Um, so, uh, it seems like they're working together now, too. Trying to clean out the corruption of their family. <laughs> Freaking mess. Tell me. Um, 9-3, book 1. One forty nine. 
Enki appeared next to my brother. This is 2.35 a.m. Enki appeared next to my brother on my chair, but was sort of fading in the vibration. Got stronger, and I felt it in my heart. He was comforting, but very strong. I began to see the body he occupied and looked as it would in the ancient stories. He then put his hands on his head and began oscillating energy into his head. I felt it in my third eye and crown. What was more or less reading the energy output. My brother opens up to it and it radiates light all around him. His heart then opens up and feels good to connect. I do get a bit of fibers that were heart. I felt some pain as well. It seemed like a vortex from my heart was connected to his. And then... And then before that, I get a third eye cleanse at 8. Was, this was this around 8. So this was third eye cleanse, shifting dimensions, and lost souls. Um, I was sitting on the rocks with my feet in the water when I suddenly felt an angel bird move into my third eye. It was um, it was like the eye of Horus flying. Like in the, in the raw stories, you have the eye that flies. Well, it was it kind of felt like that. I suddenly felt an angel bird move into my third eye. It then began to open it up and take away some of the blockages as it began to peck away at it. My pineal gland started vibrating, and I began to feel the birds that were flying overhead. So, also, when, yeah, the blockages, so there was, like, this big giant stake in my third eye that, like, came out. It was kind of bloody, too. And then behind the stake were, like, wires. It was, like, white wires that was, like, preventing energy, like, from, like, really going all to my cosmic brain. And, um... This bird was just like pecking them, and as he pecked them out, it was a falcon. The falcon flew back into it. It was funny because he like he like went on like my front, and then he was just like pecking, 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 and then then you see these white fibers just start like plucking out, and as they plucked out, this um this witch that housed her, she housed herself in there to protect herself. She like flew out, and she was like screaming. It was really funny. She actually happened to be one of my guides. Because she, like, knew everyone. She knew all the dark players and stuff. And she knew how, like, to get into them. And I was using a lot of her information. So she flew, she flew out. He was, like, screaming, ah! I'm like, I'm like, yeah, get out of here. She's funny. She, she's, um, she's a cracker. Uh, she's a good guide. A little mischievous, but for good reason. She's a good teacher. So she flew out. And then, um, and then, um, as it, as it flew out, this ring encircled around me, and then when the ring encircled, then two wings flew off from both sides, and it was the Anunnaki symbol with the ring and the like the Zor, maybe Zoroaster or whatever, but that's, that's all Anunnaki, anyways. And then there was like seven sacred planets, which is the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars. And since I figured that that probably formed because I was able to vibrate the whole solar system when when I went up to the sing to the celestial spheres, so um yeah, so I began to feel the birds that were flying or overhead. Yeah, so I felt their hearts and I felt their locations in the air based on what their hearts were doing. So I knew where all the like, even if it was a bird was behind the tree, I knew where it was because I could feel where it was like it was, it was vibrating then i saw two wings open up with a circle in the middle i don't really get too str and then yeah so i felt the that was really cool so i was just kind of like oscillating in this like it was like this new energy that i just like unlocked and like the whole area like lit up in life like i just felt everything and so i i get up um I began walking down the path, and as I was walking down the path, I was like laying down these road bridges to get into a different dimension. And yeah, my my hands began pushing out energy, and I was able to sense and amplify the energy of the plants. So I was able to feel the the sensations of these plants and these trees. So it felt very blissful and energetic as I felt the fields fluctuate with electromagnetic energy. That is when I really felt the Anunnaki symbol on my third eye pulsate even more. The whole area then came alive 
and, fe and I felt every living thing around me. I moved through a tree and felt the opening of vortex, which allowed fairy energy to come through, which increased my vibration. I then took my shoes off and began grounding and refreshing my system, which gave me a very clean and calm feeling over my entire body. Um, I also looked at the moon and felt it get energized. Like I was kind of like anchoring some dimension in. The trail was, so I, as I walked more, the trail was blocked, so I had to walk back all the energy that I laid. So that, so I walked back and I moved through the trail. I noticed the energy got a bit darker and it got hotter and the trees started smelling like burning and there was like shadow entities like running through the forest too. Like I felt the presence of it. It wasn't super strong, but I noticed that like the like stuff was like moving around in the forest. And, um, and I noticed like, like a pulsing sensation down the trail. And as I moved close, as I walked closer, yeah, it felt like I stepped into hell and a very dark energy down the road. It grew stronger. And it, yeah, so it grew stronger and stronger. This, this emanating field just kept getting stronger and stronger. And then I came, came right next to it. I even noticed the air change and I smelled burning wood. The center point of this darkness was a rock near a split in the road. It felt like it was suffering soul that is in misery and pain. Um, it was opening the portal to darker realms that radiated very far. So I held my hand out to, to try and to ease its suffering and, and like kind of convert it to be pumping out the new energy. I felt so like, as I had my hand out there, like I, I felt the dimension shift, like my hand bled into the rock and the vibration got really intense. And like, I kind of put my hand in the dark dimension and some entity started talking to me and I didn't really pay attention to it. I was just more focused on sending the energy that it needed at the time because I didn't want to learn about anything future or whatever. I was just doing what I wanted, had to do. And um, I believe, so something was trying to grab me or like reach me. So I just sent an energy, and when I did, um, stuff was flying off the trees. I believe they were pine cones, but I, I felt them hit near my radius of the rock. It was like really close, and as it as it was pulsating stronger, more would fall through. Like, like maybe like two, and then like four or five would just like fly at my face, like through to the rock as I was like engaging with this energy. So I sat with it for like about four or five minutes, and um. And then I felt like it was enough. So I, so after finishing, I was walking past some, I don't know, I noticed, so I felt to get a little better. I was communicating into the lower dimensions. My hand was getting pretty heavy and tingly as I shot energy into the rock. I might not have fully closed it, but noticed it worked. I saw you so strongly with dark energy. I also noticed things flying off trees going toward the rocks as energy was oscillating as I worked on it. I finished up and began to walk even further. I noticed the same sensation and burning smell which developed. My vibration to this dark energy was subtle but grew in strength as I got closer. This time it was a cut log that was laying on the ground. I moved my left hand up and down this log and felt energy moving into it from my hand. It was like electromagnetic waves emanating impulses. After finishing, I was walking past some bars and felt dark energy coming from the poorhouse. As I came closer, the source jumped to the memoirs and felt very strong. It was very dark and upsetting. I was making, it was making me gag. There was a suicide there, so I believe that it's the source of this energy. I felt like a gravitational pull that was very sickly. This field extended all the way up to the corner of Spot Coffee where it felt lighter. So that was the third eye cleanse. And, and then 9-5 is my metatron metatron energy activation connecting grid um so this was two days two days after book one 155 Um, I heard a heard a crack in the top left corner of the ceiling. 
I started feeling an electric blue energy start coming in. And then I felt the energy of Metatron and vision of him on top of the grid bringing in this energy. My body filled with very strong, refreshing electric energy moving through my brain. He was radiating electric blue, which from his body and wings. My head felt supercharged and it was easy to feel into the higher dimensions. And then I saw him put this energy into the box, this universe and creation existence. He outlined the entire rectangle square with the electric blue energy with the seal on each each other side. I saw him energize all the dragon face in the great circle, which I believe exists in the Brahmin universe. The circle then creates a Metatron cube that connects all the spheres together in a web of electric blue energy. I then felt this energy put into the grid. And um, when so what happened was he went on to the top of the grid and started energizing the circular spheres. And then I energized the very bottom. And then we were like reverberating this energy back and forth together, like charging up the circular spheres of the tree of life that exists. And um, it just it felt really good. So yeah, I believe there's this in the Brahmin unit. So the circle creates a Metatron cube that connects all the spheres together into like the grand central sun. You know what? Uh, the great experience electrical blue energy from my brain felt strong and it began to energize the energy signals in my palms. Yeah, so if, like my palm signals, like they had like energy, like blue white imprints over the emblems. The energy signals on my palms. This blue lightning energy then filled the outside of the rings that house the energy, creating a barrier. My vibration has really increased. It shattered the black rue grid, even looked like it melted. We radiated the tree of life spheres from the bottom up as I was a bomb circle and an energy reverberated between us. Me and, and then me and Manitron put our hands together when he came in. It was a good feeling. We felt the battles we have all been in. The heart gets tingles and my third eye felt pulsations, but it wasn't intense. He put a cube above my head and the lights began to flicker. Um... So then after this, we started watching Constantine with Keanu Reeves in around one, and I noticed a very dark presence coming in my room. It gave me the EBGB sort of piercing into the heart. Felt like dread. The walls and fridge were cracking a lot as well. It lasted for much of the movie as more cracks came through the walls into my room. So they were, they were using my room to cleanse the grid, and every time we encountered some sort of demon or whatever, um, it would get sucked into my obelisk, and then we eventually just cleaned out the obelisk too in my room. Everything was good. Um, my heart was getting heavy, and I noticed my consciousness was a bit stressed. I felt like it was being pulled a little bit. I read my room and noticed it was still dark. The obelisk in my room also felt a bit, so I was feeling that too. Felt like all the dark energy that moved into my room got sucked into the obelisk. I was running through some grids in the far sec sections as we were connecting circuits in the grid. After a few minutes, I began to laugh after my buddy made a laughing gesture. Felt like we completed a portion, and my heart felt better as well. So we were like we, we were like connecting the like the darker parts that weren't cleaned out yet. Me and my buddy just kind of throwing them off the uh, the lines and then just re calibrating the circuit so it's got the diamond energy in it um, yeah so that's about it that's that's the entire um call that into the shadows so um there was on uh, nine five for astrological uh, solar run elevated lasting geostorms there was a six point six and six point earth uh, point earthquake that was on September fifth and six there was a huge blast in the far side mass of CME and Venus uh, solar winds was down though but that was the Metatron activation so it's funny that there was like that blast and uh, earthquakes too nine three. Earth, Earth direct to CME, coronal stream arise at Earth, geomagnetic instability. That was when Inlow and Anki visited. <laughs> coronal storm. That was the storm, right? Coming in through us like a storm. Um, 831. 
little takeover, huge eruption on far side, CME, Venus Impact. So, yeah, just a lot of correlations with everything. And that's pretty much my story for this Lions Gate. And um, there's a lot more stuff in the past that happened too. But I just want to get this out because a lot of a lot of things have happened. So that's about it. And um, maybe I'll make another video about stuff. And keep it going. Good luck out there, guys. And happy battling. It's tough, I know. But it's something that we got to do. So, good night.